Bishop Nathaniel, whether we like it or not, is going to be the most powerful black man in the country, if not the world below. These people are watching Israel United in Christ. We are the forerunners of the black man. We are the ones that are gonna take over the world and, and, and make our people recognize who they are and what they have to do to regain rulership and power on this earth, power with God. So you cannot be average, brothers. You are not average. Greenville is on the on and popping. The sisters out there, they miss y'all. They say shalom and whatnot. So uh, they are uh, up and running today. We went out there to check them out. Uh, congregation is doing good. It's going to grow pretty quick. Uh, we definitely need brothers to continue to get their mind right, continue to build themselves up to be a part of what's taking place in South Carolina. We got a lot of work. We, we spread thin right now. So we need willing souls, men that are, on my list, number one is not scary as hell, all right? You're not scared to put it on the line. If you are unsure of what you're doing, that's okay. It might be, might, just might be where you're at now. You may come along later. But if you believe and you understand what's taking place on the earth and that you're a part of the greatest movement that's going to ever be on the earth, then you got to gird up your loins and find out how to to be able to label and put a brick in. That's storing those treasures up in heaven. And sisters, y'all got a lot of little light work y'all can do, y'all. You so support your husband, different little things like that. We don't need y'all with no boots on, all right? Y'all keep y'all slippers on, all right? But brothers got to boot up. Um, with a bread and wine. I'm kind of just rambling. But we're going to touch a couple of scriptures. You know what I want to start with, Romans 15 and verse 4. Just want brothers to understand the seriousness of what's of what we're doing and that none, nothing that we do is is in vain. The Lord, the Lord's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. And the works that we put forth, the effort that we put forth is not going to go without being recorded. Read that Romans 15 and 4. Got to start right there. It's the book of book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So I know I've got a phone full of issues with that brothers are dealing with, sisters are dealing with, and a lot of these things we got to really look and examine ourselves first about why these certain things are taking place in our lives. Uh, one, I want to say if you're breaking bread and you on the uh, – weaker side or you bull jiving you might want to re-examine that thing if you're breaking bread and you're not really on the up and up about your life and this truth and you find yourself sick you find yourself always going through it family going through it everybody always sick we, we know what we read when we put get get that in corinthians real quick we read this every week but i don't think people take into account how serious it is when they bring the bread out and they bring the wine out, and then we partake in it. You need to understand exactly what's taking place. When you, how many of y'all was from the streets? Like I'm talking about really from the streets. Like you, you was in the street. You know what that life was really about. How many of y'all was involved in gangs? Like you really involved. Like really know what the life was about. You ever heard of blood in, blood out? Well, that's what you do when you drink. When you drink that wine, and you break that bread, read it. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 20. Do we start? Yeah, start at the beginning. Verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. So what did you receive? You received this gospel of the Lord. Men of the Lord delivered this gospel unto you as it was delivered unto them. Read. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, so took be bread. Because of this gospel, on the same night that Christ was betrayed, on the night that he did, he had to, he he had to give up his life. He took the bread, the wine, and did what? And said, "Took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you.' So this is my body. I'm breaking. My, this is my body, which is going to be broken for you. 
My body is going to be broken, pierced, destroyed for you. Read. This do in remembrance of me. But I want you to break this bread in remembrance of what is about to be done to my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Read. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This is the new covenant that I'm making with you in my blood. I don't think that really resonates with people right there, man. I think that people read that and they just think, okay, well, you know, yes, this is it's just blood. If I take a damn uh, a container and hook you up to a what you call the little ciphering machines and drain all the damn blood out of you, what happens to you? Read that part again. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you drink this cup, you drink this in remembrance of the blood. The blood is the life. With no, without no blood, there's no life in the body. The blood is the life of the body. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Read. For as often as ye eat this bread. For as often. For as often as you eat this bread, which is his what? His body that was broken. Come on. And drink this cup. And you drink this cup, which represents his blood that was shed. Come on. You do show the Lord's death till he come. You show. You are to show an example, a life of the Lord's death until he come. Hold that. Get uh, mm, Was it 1 Peter 2.22 or 21? Be an example. Hold that. Remember that thought. You are to show the Lord's death until he come. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called. because here, here, Hereunto were you called. Because Christ also suffered for us. He did what? Suffered for us. You see, all of the descriptions, everything lines up when you understand what's really going on. Christ suffered for us. Come on. Leaving us an example. He left us an example. Come on. That ye should follow his steps. That we should follow his steps. Now go back to that in Corinthians. Read that again. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 26. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. So now you breaking bread and you drinking wine. Wherefore, read that again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. You eat this bread and you drink this cup unworthily. Meaning you know you really ain't about this life. You know you're really not trying to, you know, put it on the line. I'm more so speaking with, for brothers on this, sisters too. But brothers are the men. you the one that got to decide, you know what? It's time for me to put the video games down. The video games down. Let me study. Let me get my itch together. I'm, I'm about to be a man of war. I'm going to learn to war with a book with words in it. We're going to destroy a whole kingdom with, a, with words in a book. We're going to take down America, the most powerful nation on the planet, with words in a book. But brothers don't believe that. You don't believe that words in this book is going to destroy a kingdom that has nuclear bombs, that has ICBM missiles. The words in this Bible are going to bring down that kingdom. Read that again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the so Lord. So when you eat this bread and you drink this cup, come on. Of the Lord unworthily. And you know you're not about giving your life for this. You know you're not about striving to put forth the effort to give your life for this. Sisters too. You know you ain't really standing behind that man 100%. He come in the house and God, he just does sit in the car for 30 minutes before he get home. You know that you're not really putting forth the effort at home so he can have some place to come and really learn to war. He done worked all day. He should be able to come home and have a place to study. If he studies, hell, some of them, that's another, that's a whole nother issue. But he should have that place of comfort, that place of peace so that he can learn the war. His mind has to learn the war with the words of God. Come on. He do it, you do it unworthily. Come on. Shall be guilty. Of the body and blood of the Lord. Now you become guilty of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Read. But let a man examine himself. So examine yourself before you say, I want some, I, I want some uh, bread. Everybody say, thank you. Deacon Laba say, clap your hand for the sister that make the bread. Everybody clapping for the bread. It tastes good. But you don't know what you just did. The bread was good, wasn't it? What's the name of that bread y'all be making? Them damn sherbet, damn... Uh, 
you know, strawberry laced and all. It, it's good. But that bread can be deceiving when your mind ain't right. If your mind ain't right, don't break the bread. It's blood in, blood out, homeboy. Read. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So after you examine yourself and you say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm giving my life for this. Then you drink of that bread. You drink of that cup and you break that bread. Read. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. Because if you don't, you eat and you drink unworthily. Come on. Eat it and drink it damnation to himself. This is why your family be going through it. This is why you be going through it. I'm straight up. You ain't here clapping your hand for the damn bread every week. Not realizing that same bread you breaking because your mind ain't right is causing sickness and illness and shit in your life that shouldn't be happening. Things that you can't, that you should be able to control. Read it again. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. You eat and you drink damnation to yourself. This is a spiritual book. Did we go into slavery? Is it written in here? Everything else that happened is going gonna, is gonna, gonna to come to pass. You eat and you drink damnation to yourself. Come on. Not discerning the Lord's body. You don't discern that you did. You, 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 the Lord's, what you're doing pertains to the body of Christ. Come on. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. You wonder why your faith ain't really there? You wonder why you weak? You wonder why my brother says, we're going to camp. We're going to the hood over here and such and such. Brother, be <coughs> oh, I can't make it today. Hell, I got the flu. Damn, you just went to work yesterday. Because you're breaking this bread. Now fear comes on you when it's time to stand before them niggas that's still in the streets like you was. When it's time to stand before them brothers that's toting them, them pistols like you was, now you got some fear. Because you ain't kept it a hundred with these with the words in this book yet. When you decide to look, listen, there's nothing more gangster than the most high God. He put your behind and the whole nation in slavery. Can you do that? No, we can't do that. So the best thing for us to do is get behind the most diabolical genius ever. I said diabolical because the Lord is, he said, I'm a God of terror. You ain't seen, he'll make it so dark in here. You can't see your damn hands. You, all you, you'll hear voices that be so dark in this mug. That's in the Bible. Literally, he ain't got to put a finger on you. He could just bring darkness in here right now. We couldn't even see each other. Yeah. So dark, you can you will feel like there's a spirit of evil just hovering over you. And you'll die of fear. Exactly. That you you just pass out. It'd be so damn dark. Just darkness. Read on. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Many die. Many sleep, many, many die. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. brought out with Zeke. We read these verses about breaking bread and we don't understand it's a mission behind that. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27. Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You're going to be guilty in the body and the blood of the Lord. I understand something. Christ gave his life for his people. We have to understand that. And you've been called You've been called to do the work. So when you don't take this seriously, you got to remember he called you to do a job. Ezekiel 3 and 17. This is what you're guilty of. When you don't want to study, you don't want to come to Camp 101, you don't want to put in the work, you don't want to do what it's take, uh, what it uh, took to be a, a prophet. That's what he called you to do. He didn't call you to come in here and occupy a seat. This ain't Sunday church. 
He called you to be a warrior. He called you to give your life for your people. Read that. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. He made you a watchman to the house of Israel. That's the job he called you for. Read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth uh -huh. and give them warning from me. Do what? Give them warning from me. Hey, that's what the people, that's what your enemies hate. You're warning your people. You're awakening your people because it's a war. And when you're going against this machine, guess what? They got the power to put you to death. But you're supposed to give your life the same way Christ gave his life. To give them warning. Because they understand when we rise up as a people, their kingdom is coming down. So they don't want you to do that. They plant that seed of doubt in your head. They make you afraid. But you got to stand up like real men. And do what? Give them warning from me. Read. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou giveth him not warning, nor speakest to warn him, to warn the wicked from, the wicked, from his wicked way. To save his life. To do what? To save his life. That's our job. We're, we're called for a mission to save our people's lives. We got to take that seriously. That bread, that wine, that symbolizes Christ's body. He gave his life. You got to be ready to give your life. You're going to say you're a true Christian? Be one that's ready to die for your people. Read. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Read. But his blood will I require at thine hand. See, that's how most I feel about that. If you ain't ready to, to give that man warning to save his life, he says, I'm going to require you. I'm going to require you die for that. Read. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. We did what? Delivered thy soul. Hey, you delivered your soul. You ate that bread. You drank that wine worthy. You deliver your soul just because you do your job. That's it. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. Good, good precept. It segues right down the alley that I'm going because traveling, you get to see different things in different congregations, uh, especially amongst the men. And I'm always looking at the men here as opposed to the men in other schools, and I'm asking questions pertaining to their men that are raising up and men that are coming in based off of the condition of uh, our our school, our men, and looking at what's going on with theirs. I know some of y'all got to leave. Don't let me hold you. Leave at any point in time you get ready. But we had Spartanburg spring up that took some men out. We're still building in Charleston, though we don't have a congregation there yet. It's going to happen. But when you think about the scope of the men that we have here, I'm looking like, well, damn, who are we going to send down there? Who is going to lead the front? I know your husband is. Uh, he all about that Charleston thing. You know what I'm saying? Me too, because I want to see it spark off. Charleston is going to be one hell of a beast when you get those Negroes down there to wake up. When I tell you about when, you, when Charleston wakes up, hell, it's going down in South Carolina because it's been beat down for so long. It's the most beat down uh, part of the country or part of the state that exists. So they're, they're trodden to a point, they've been trodden to a point of fear, a point of self-neglect. They don't, they, don't they don't have a whole lot of, of knowledge towards where they come from and their people. They've lost that much of their heritage. We've all lost it. But when you go to Charleston, they got statues of Denmark Vesey in their neighborhood. And they don't know that's Denmark Vesey. They got uh, uh, apartment complexes in the same by the same prison that Denmark Vesey was in. They don't even know that Denmark Vesey was there. Charleston is going to be a, a, a gold mine for Columbia. I mean, for South Carolina once we build it up. So I know the necessity of men is going to be required once we reach the point of building Greenville and merging into uh, Charleston. But the question is, where are the men that are going to stand up to do this? We got a bunch of brothers in purple shirt right now. Yeah, that's cool. But where are the men that are going to come behind them? And the men that's going to come behind them? 
The one thing that I've noticed in this troop is that when brothers, as we raise brothers up to soldier, officer 10, officer 20, and I look back and it's always like, damn, where the next group going to come from? And then I walked in today and I'm like, oh, damn. Fruits of labor is in the building. Get the Lord a hand. Fruits of labor is in the building. So we can't worry about where it's going to come from. It's going to happen. But what you have to worry about is that you're in a seat right now. But will you be in that seat a year from now? Will you maintain that seat for two years, three years? Can you maintain that seat and do the job that the Lord has called you to do? Can you do that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, start at verse 14. The book of No, no, no. 1 Timothy chapter 2, start at verse 14. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter. I'm sorry. Book of I'm Second I'm Timothy, yeah, chapter 2, verse 14. Okay. I'm pulling a bishop right now. Got gotcha, you, brother. There you go. Read that. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit. So this is it's gonna go into what officers just bringing out. Men studying and always being in remembrance of words to no profit. What is your mission here? You heard the word of God, you bowed your ear to listen, then you came through the door. What is your mission here? Read it again. Of these things, put them in remembrance. So put these things in remembrance, read. Charging them before the Lord. Charging you all that are before the Lord, read. That they strive not about words to no profit. Strive not about words to no profit. What is that going into? All the foolishness that we used to be about. All the all the all the, the sports, hey, we know all the stats. LeBron hit a triple double, three, three five. Well, I don't even know stats. So I'm just saying, y'all stat brothers know what I'm talking about. We know all the damn uh who 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 don't won all the games throughout the year. You know who was gonna win the Super Bowl before the damn Super Bowl got here. You knew all those numbers. Those are words of no profit. Come on. But to the subverting of the hearers. But to the subverting of the hearers of the word of God. Come on. Study. Do what? Study. You get, you brothers got to study. That's the one thing that we all got to do, but more so you men, because you are called to be the prophets of the Lord. You cannot be a prophet of the Lord and be dumb as hell. That just don't work. You ain't no such thing as a dumb prophet. It ain't. Prophets know dates, times. He can line history up. That's what, this is what prophets do. We take the time to buy books. My damn bookshelf is worth more than anything in my house right now. Hell, I'd be scared if somebody break in there to take the bookshelf. Forget everything else. <laughs> but Negroes dumb. They're going to walk past the bookshelf. <laughs> They're going to walk right past the bookshelf. This is what you got to do. We must study to do what? To show thyself approved unto God. No, to show yourself approved unto men. Approved unto God. Come on. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When you are studying and rightly dividing the word of truth, you ain't got to worry about being ashamed. And I know that's uh, something that many brothers deal with when they come into the truth. Sisters, too. You may not be the smartest or the sharpest knife in the tool or in, in the drawer. You might not. That might not be you. You may have a learning disability. Uh, Captain Yon had a class a few weeks ago. He said, if you slow Hey, let everybody know. I'm a little slow. Read that again. You got to read something three times for me to get it. Maybe even 10. And I might ask you one more time after that to help me understand it. So what? So what if it take you that long to get it? One thing about it, I noticed brothers that be slow to comprehend things, when they got it, bro, it's over with. It's over. They got it. They got it. Now everything start locking in. It just takes a matter of time and applying yourself. To show yourself approved unto God, not man. So we must be doing these things. Why? Why should we be studying? Because there ain't no such thing as a dumb prophet. From there, give me Sirach, uh, 3317. Because the studying ain't for no reason. The studying is so that one day your tool, that your knife that was once dull, becomes sharper than a blade, fresh out of the pack from damn loaves. You become that two-edged blade on the street. Now wielding the sword, the words of the Most High, to call your people in. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 17. Consider that I labored not for myself only. Labored where? Labored where? Labored in studying. Labored in the word of God. Because it's, 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 
It's a tough thing to work all day, then go home, open the Bible, and 10 minutes later, you like this. Their Bible done been open for 30 minutes. You done been asleep for 45. How'd that happen? Read that again. Consider that I labored not for myself only. So you don't labor and study for yourself only. Come on. But for all them that seek learning. For all them that seek learning. All them dudes out there, they, they, everybody that's playing gangster right now, they just... It's an JJ's plan. Today's gangster is not what it used to be. They're about the trend. I got an article sent to me by an officer Thursday night. South Carolina is now one of the top five states that houses the most organized gang activity in America. South Carolina. You wouldn't believe that now, would you? You wouldn't believe that. All the gangs are here. You know why? Because they... South Carolina's a lot slower than the other states, a whole lot slower. They be doing something in New York. We don't get it to 20 years later. Yeah, 15 years later, we just find out, oh, that's how that go. Yeah, we start cuffing our pants at the bottom at least 10 years after they was doing it in New York. I know, because I'm a cuffer. You did. Because it's slower here, things, uh, people tend to migrate here. And what is migrated here is gang activity. A lot of us that participated in that lifestyle, it's our fault, especially if you're 40 years and over. Because that didn't exist back in 1993. 93, 94, there were no gangs in South Carolina. Now it's one of the top, we are one of the top five states in the country. So we don't labor for ourselves, but for all them that seek learning. Read on. Hear me, O ye great men of the people. Hear ye what? O ye great men of the people. The Bible is talking to you men. You are the laborers that have to study. Hear ye, O great men of the people. Read. And hearken with your ears. And hearken with your ears. Read. Ye rulers of the congregation. You're supposed to be rulers of the congregation. That's what are you studying. To be able to give the sense. To bring the people in. This is why you must go through MOV. To become a soldier. And keep studying to become an officer of 10 and move through the ranks. This is what we need men for. Because everybody has their little circle of people that they have to reach. People that you know, bro, I can't, I don't know them. Like, you know them. You got to go and teach them this word. You got to say, hey, look, you know what? I'm going to bring the brothers, hit brothers. This, this area right here is a good camp location. It's a bunch of our people over here. They're seeking knowledge. I was dealing with brothers and sisters over here. They, they, they're receptive. They, they want to learn. That's how it happens. This is how we continue to expand our movement, continue to spread the gospel. It's like putting a damn Coca-Cola uh, vending machine in a whole bunch of different stores. That's what we're doing with this Bible with souls, though. We're doing it with souls. As we raise up and we learn and we get to understanding, we pass that down to another brother over here. That's another vending machine. That's another vending machine. It spreads out so that our people can come and learn because this thing is happening quick. We may think it's moving at a, at a slow pace, but it's not. Hey, IT, I, I can you find that video where, they, where the brother was talking about Bishop Nathaniel being the most, you know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all seen that video? One, two. All right, find that for me. Let me know when you got it. I want to play that. But this is how fast the truth is spreading. This truth is not a, it's not a game. And if you are playing games, I pray that you wake up and realize who you are and what you must become. Because who you are today is not who you really are. The Lord has called you to be somebody else. He's called you to go through the fire. Purge yourself. You got it? Uh, eliminate, uh, eliminate, got it. Huh? You about to sit? Sent, posted it on the IT channel, posted it somewhere. On the classrooms. Do you know the time the uh timestamp? All we got all we gotta do is move through it a little bit. We'll see him when he pulled Bishop up on the screen. Just pull it up for me real quick. Because this is important. It's important because how many of y'all married? Raise your hand. That's more than normal. How many of y'all single? Raise your hand. Sucks to be you. <laughs> but I'm saying, how many of y'all got kids? Who is gonna protect these? This who gonna protect the family? You. The wife ain't. She ain't got no. She, she shouldn't have no boots. But I'm just saying. Sometimes you know. Sometimes it be the opposite. 
It should not be the opposite. You are the men that the Lord has called in them doors. We didn't, we didn't call y'all in here. We didn't. The word of God called you in here. So now you got to see what's, what, what, what is on the table before you. What's all on the table? The, it's already been built. Now, where do you get in at? Where, what are you good at? What do you bring to the table? Because the table is built. The meal is prepared. And when Christ come back, it's going to be time to eat. Because right now we fishers. We fish right now. We, we're fishing for souls. But the time is coming where we're going to become hunters. And everybody that is outside of this Bible going to get it. Esau going to get it. Amalek going to get it. Everybody going to get it. You got the video? Pull it up for me. When you take a good look at Bishop Nathaniel, listen to his interviews, look at his picture, see his movement, you can't help but to say that when you look at that man, beloved, and this is just an our estimate, within the next 20 years, Bishop Nathaniel, whether we like it or not, is going to be the most powerful black man in the country. If not the world, beloved. Pause right there. That is our take. Pause right there. Now, I want you to see how serious this is. And he's not with us. This is not somebody that's with us. These are bystanders that are watching the nation. These people are watching Israel United in Christ. We are the forerunners of the black man. We are the ones that are going to take over the world and, and, and make our people recognize who they are and what they have to do to regain rulership and power on this earth. Power with God. So you cannot be average, brothers. You are not average. They're looking at Bishop Nathaniel. Well, guess what? Just like, just like what they did to Malcolm, just like what they did to Martin, they can do the same thing to Bishop Nathaniel. We must fight our way through it. No matter the shame, no matter the hardship, fight, keep fighting, never give up. Let me jump to uh, John chapter 21, verse 16. John 21, verse 16, real quick. Because as you get built up, once you learn, these, once you learn the Bible, your job is to go out and feed the sheep. Your job is to go out and feed the flock of Israel. Read that. It's the book of John, chapter 21, verse 16. He said to him again the second time. Read, read up one verse. Verse 15. So when, they had so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. You got to put yourself in Simon's shoes right now. You got to put yourself in Peter's shoes right now. Read. He said unto him, feed my lamb. Do what? Feed my lamb. Read on. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Do you love Christ? Do you love this gospel? Do you love your people? Read. He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. That's what many of us say, Lord, you know we love you. Come on. He said unto him, feed my sheep. Because it's all about the flock. It's all about the people. Read. He said unto him the third time. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus, Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. He said, feed my sheep. Well, how are you going to feed the sheep if you don't got the food that the sheep needs? In order to get the food that they need, you brothers got to study. Last script. Give me 2 Peter 3, 1, two, one and 2. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 2. Read that quick. It's the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your minds, your pure minds by way of remembrance. So what I just went over is just to stir up your pure minds. Your pure minds. Not the mindset that we come from. The pure minds of you coming into this gospel coming into this truth, to become men of the Lord. Read. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, uh -huh. and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. That's it. That's all I want right there. So, it's just, y'all brothers need to understand that you are not the man that you walked in that door when you walked through that door. How many ever days ago, weeks ago it was. The change started right then. Now you must continue to tap in. You can either fear it, tuck your tail and run, 
or you can embrace it and become one of the most powerful men on the earth, just like Bishop Nathaniel. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.